Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. On today's video I have this BMW um, E90. This is a 2008 model and uh, it's a 318 and I'm trying to diagnose a misfire. So the car starts but it's uh, running very rough misfiring quite a lot um, so I was checking here <clears throat> with this uh, diagnostics equipment and um, this car had the the coils and spark plugs replaced five years ago and it's only done 10,000 miles since then so um, I doubt it's something to do with those two, but it could be it could be the fuel injectors. And at the minute, it's decided to start running quite well. <laughs> anyway, um, while running the actuation test here and injection system, when I switched the injector number one off. Um, the car, uh, there was no no difference on the on the running of the engine. So at the moment, if I switch that off, you will see the change. You can hear it, and then I will stop that. And the car runs just fine so same you can do with any other here if you, you if you do injector 2 switch it off then you have the rough running the misfire and if you stop that then the engine starts running quite well so a few seconds ago, a few minutes ago, when I was doing these tests, um, the injector number one had no effect. It was um, constantly off. So um, either I have a faulty injector there that it was just not, it's not uh, pumping in fuel. Uh, and now that the engine is reaching temperature, then it is starting to pump some fuel so I've compared a lot of the the values here with another E90 I have at bay uh, one thing I notice it's um, so data stream so I will I will put the the readings of the other car and then we'll be able to compare them but first we'll have a look at this so I'll just switch those two off. So all of these will be pretty much the same. Same reading. The, the fuel pressure is the same. Um, temperature, mass airflow, meter. The only thing here is uh, this. reading here is 860 um, so on the other car this is a lot lower so whether there's some contamination going on in the cut I'm not sure fuel contamination or something from the misfire it might be one of those maybe that's why that might be high um, but apart from that, everything else, all the rest of the values were pretty much the same. All of these here, in comparison to the other car, were very much the same. And Vanos as well. Sometimes Vanos can cause problems. I had the same readings 
and um, smooth running value so the misfire this at the moment um, is probably gonna give so a few minutes ago all of these with the misfire I had were just reading flat figures so all of them were flat one straight line no none of this so that's just to do with the smooth running values obviously the car was not running smooth at all so uh, so you have all flat lines um, and obviously the only fault codes I have are combustion misfire cylinder number one um, earlier I had cylinder, cylinder number two and cylinder number three on misfire as well so um, it could be that the injectors uh, the fuel injectors are causing this this problem so what I want to do is at the moment the car is running okay um, but earlier on I was struggling to even start it it just wouldn't start um, so it might be that it's just because it's warmed up that it's running properly so what I'm gonna have to do is let it cool down and um, I'll show you what I mean Okay, so in the meantime, um, I'm trying to get access to the injectors here. The injectors will be under this cover. I removed um, all the bits that are sitting here. And, <clears throat> and so I can get access. So removing all of this area here of the pollen filter and, and the cover that is sitting there it's not really uh, that difficult and also obviously if you're tackling a, a job which is a little bit more complex like this one then I may assume you know how to remove the pollen filter already and if you don't there are lots of videos out there that there is a five millimeter allen to take these screws out and at this point I want to be careful not to drop any screws just be careful not to drop anything in there this should potentially slide out we can put this cover back in here and um, this is where our Oil packs are all of these as I said were changed not long ago so I'm just gonna make sure they're all in sitting in properly uh, swap plugs were replaced as well um, so that leaves me with a problematic injectors or or something else altogether so that is what this video is going to be about um, obviously if I get it sorted then i'll pause the video <laughs> if i don't get it sorted not much point but eventually it has to be sorted so um uh, as i said i'm sus sus suspecting at the moment i'm suspecting a doji injector um these are common actually uh, injectors are common to to fail in this model um, 
and we have changed some of those before but uh, the thing is those are really expensive they're like 250 pounds each so the whole set is like a grand that's why we just want to kind of make sure um, we find out what the problem is and so now I'm just gonna check check for um, if there's any any fuel leaking or any fuel drips around although I can't smell any petrol sometimes you can smell some petrol and it could be that there is a, a leak somewhere but also I'm gonna let the car cool down a little bit so we can I can show you what I mean by the misfire that is happening here and also I'm um, gonna prepare an injector I do have an injector a spare one or two uh, which I will try but I think they need to be coded however in the past I have plugged them in and they just worked so so um, we'll see okay car has been uh, cooling down for a bit so let's see what happens here so I can tell straight away it's misfiring started a little bit better than earlier on though when it was fully cold it wouldn't want to start at all so right now it's misfiring as you can tell um, or maybe you can't tell because actually I can see on the camera you can't really see the uh, engine shaking well now you can see so that's running very rough um, so what I want to do the first thing I want to do is uh, I've got an injector here I'm gonna change it and see if that makes any difference um, I wasn't able to spot any leaks any fuel leaks anything like that so I think the first thing to do will be to definitely check change uh, cylinder number one injector which is that one there so I'm gonna switch the car off and we'll do, we'll do that Okay, so we're going to need a, a 14 mil spanner to open these connections here, loosen them, and also an 11 millimeter socket to loosen the clamp that is uh, sitting, well there's a bolt holding a, a, a clamp which holds the injectors down as well, um, and we're going to need to just loosen that. gonna loosen that a little bit but before I take it out completely I want to release the the pressure here because um, there's gonna be some pressure fuel pressure in the injectors um, and also another thing if you open if you don't disconnect the battery um, the fuel pump may pump fuel from time to time which means um, you could get fuel coming out of here so that's something to be aware of because uh, one time <laughs> I had this off somebody opened the back door and then fuel came out straight into my face so I had a fuel shower um, so I'm just gonna put a, this rag here to catch whatever fuel may come out of there So just releasing the pressure there and trying to catch it with my rag and we may have a little bit here as well so I'll just uh, open that I'm just covering it because I don't really want any fuel in my face so 
so that's off now and uh, you could remove these here now like so but while you're working here you might see that that is pointing right at you so if you put a bit of rag in there and like I said if you haven't disconnected the battery um, if the fuel, fuel pump kicks in now and again then you're gonna get fuel sprayed at you to get a bit more access to the injector I may just remove this uh, connection here so I have a little bit better access to that section and now I can release this clamp as well that's the clamp there with a 11 mil bolt. And also, I'm gonna disconnect this wire. You just need to open the little clip on the side and then you can literally pull that out. It's just clipped, a little clip holding onto that. Technically, this this will not be in there that tight. And that's the injector there. So, just gonna check here the part numbers. One three five three seven zero eight. Okay, so that part number is slightly different, uh, but the rest this is pretty much okay. So you can see it's actually slightly different injector. So that's why the part numbers don't match. The difference is down here. So I'm gonna see if I have another one of these. Okay, so I managed to find another one um, that is pretty much the same there. Part number again uh, up to 758 is the same. After that it's a slightly different. Uh, but um, it is pretty much the same injector so I'm gonna try I'm gonna put this one in there and uh, we'll see what happens it's also a little bit fiddly to get this clamp back So, a little bit of patience is advised. And to get the bolt down in there, <laughs> I put a bit of paper there so it sort of clamps onto my socket. And then that way it doesn't come out and you don't lose it. I mean, even though the spark plugs and oil packs were replaced, um, sometimes they can fail. So the only reason I'm going with the injector at the moment is because when I was doing the uh, test with the computer, when I was switching off the injector, there was no change 
in the idling, but uh, <clears throat> that could also be true if that wasn't working. So if I was switching that off, then that was switching off, but the spark is not working, then you would have the same symptom. So it's just a... It's a little bit of a try and er trial and error, re really. Right, just make sure those go in nicely by hand, because if they don't, then you could damage the thread on the injector or on your fuel rail there. And we don't want to be damaging anything. Also, these they don't really you don't really tighten them too much. They're quite good at sealing, so okay. Got it all back on, and uh, let's see what happens. I'm gonna start the cart now. Uh, it might take a little while to start because obviously uh, the fuel uh, release the pressure and there's no fuel here and whatnot. any issues when I get back to it. So it's a little bit slow process but um, it's one way to do it uh, to do the diagnosis and also I'm going to um, see if that inverter can be coded or not. I'm not sure if that's needed so I'll have a look at that. The 
Because now the car is cold and it's not being okay. Okay, so yesterday I, um, after I started the car when it was, uh, after leaving it for a little while to be cold, it actually, it was running okay. So um, I took it for a test drive and everything was fine. But um, now I left it overnight. Um, so I wanna start it from really, really cold and see what it behaves like. Because um, on my previous check, I had uh, three cylinders misfiring uh, when the engine was really cold. Um, so as a result, I just want to make sure that uh, even though I changed the inject injector in cylinder number one and it was behaving okay when it was reasonably warm, um, really need to check, make sure the other two cylinders are not causing any issues um, because otherwise, uh, obviously we'll have to replace those as well. Um, just luckily I do have another two in uh, second hand injectors there um, but ultimately the in injectors I'm using uh, second hand are just gonna be for um, testing purposes in the end we'll probably have to buy new ones to fit to the car but like I said before I want to make sure it's an injector situation because they are really expensive <laughs> so um, car is cold I have the key somewhere. Let me get the key. Right, got the key here. Uh, let's see how this car goes. Okay, that has actually started really, really smoothly. Um, I'm going to connect the OBD while that is running check for any fault codes but it's running smooth very smooth actually so I'm actually quite happy with that right. this is the uh, OBD I'm using by the way by launch um, to do all the uh, injective checking here Okay, so the um, idle is a little bit high, obviously, when you first start the car because it's, it's cold and it's, it's almost like applying choke to it. Obviously, these days you don't use choke, but uh, it just runs a little bit richer. Uh, the mixture runs richer, the revs are a little bit higher, and then the car switches to normal idle. And it's idling uh, really well, so... It looks like we may have found a problem here, which was that injector number one was causing uh, a lot of issues. Maybe it was blocked, and if it was blocked, maybe it was causing some uh, back pressure on the, that rail. Uh, can't really say such, but uh, uh, right, let's get this going. So I'm just gonna um, connect that and then we're gonna check for fault codes. Okay, so I'm just getting to the part of checking for fault codes and uh, no fault codes are, are in there, which is really good news. Uh, by the way, I have to switch off the car and switch it on again because otherwise this uh, won't connect properly. Um, and we can read the data stream here again. Let's have a look at... No, I want to see... Let's have a look at that. You can see the engine speed, the idling is uh, at 700 or about 800 really. 
somewhere in between the fuel pressure high pressure and low pressure are within scale the mass airflow is within range The only figure here that was slightly different was um, was that one there with it from the other car, but I, I don't recall whether it was <laughs> in grams or milligrams. So I'll have to double check that. Uh, however, there is no, there's actually no any fault codes on this car. Um, the other car actually that I compared with this one does have a NOx, um, NOx sensor fault code coming up and from from some uh, research I've been doing the NOx sensor uh, fault code usually relates to the actually the catalytic converter being getting a little bit clogged or getting dirty um, and possibly in need of replacement because um, you might find that you replace the knock sensor and the knock sensor fault keeps coming up so that's something to bear in mind um, and I think BMW recommends only changing the catalytic converter even though you get the fault code on the knocks they recommend changing the cat converter only if, if you are having symptoms in the engine um, so such as misfires and things like that. That's why when I started the video um, I was saying uh, The misfire could be coming from the spark plugs the coil packs injectors or Something else could can cause a misfire even a, a, thro a throttle body not functioning properly or a breather um, So it, there could be a few things um, that need to be checked if you once you've um, ruled out fuel injectors and coil packs and spark plugs anyway in this case <laughs> maybe um, I was lucky in a way to know that my spark plugs and coil packs have been changed 10,000 miles ago even though it was uh, five years ago um, they can go faulty but I was not suspecting them um, and I have experienced problems with injectors before, not on this car and other E90s um, and we had to replace them all as a pack um, so anyway um, having said that uh, I am happy with the results at the moment um, the car is running really well no issues whatsoever, the misfire was straight away before even if I started the car it was misfiring so um, I think for this one we, I managed to um, fix it whether there was a bit of luck there or not <laughs> I'm not sure however uh, having a an, a scanner is a good idea because you can actually switch off the injectors um, and then see if one of them is uh, not if there's any changes or no changes in, in the actual uh, car so you can actually in the engine so you can actually investigate that particular cylinder you could even swap um, Injectors You could swap that injector one with injector two if you haven't got a spare one You could swap uh, coil pack Put number one in number two and vice versa and you can change even do that with the spark plugs to see if your misfire actually moves from cylinder number one to cylinder number two once you do the swap um, so it's just all to do with diagnostics and, and fault finding really um, however be careful if you're playing around with fuel like I said if you open those fuel rails there fuel will jump out if you leave it open and you don't cover it and you haven't disconnected the battery the fuel pump can kick in and throw fuel at your face and whatnot so always be careful um, and make sure you only start the engine when everything is back in position. Uh, so anyway, having said that, 
I hope this video helps. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.